After four long years, we finally have the sequel to Ghost of Tsushima. And it looks bloody excellent. Now, you'll notice I didn't say that it's the Ghost of Tsushima 2. There's a good reason for that. This game is Ghost of Yotai, set 300 years after Ghost of Tsushima and in an entirely new location, or in the area of the mountain of Yotai, which is at the far northern end of Japan as its own little island. So what we're going to do is, I've looked at the trailer so many times, there's some really cool parts, but instead of a classic, you know, oh, I'm going to react to the trailer and give you a bit by bit breakdown, what I've done is I've looked at the trailer, I found some really key points that I wanted to discuss, and that's what we're going to go through here now. This will be stuff like the world, the story and the setting, as well as the mechanics that we can glean from the trailer. So let's get right into it, I can't really be arsed uh, with any bigger of an intro. So the first thing that I want to go over is the world itself, and it looks phenomenal, it looks so good. And it's funny because before this trailer was announced, I was actually making a, another video for Shadows, which will still come out, don't worry. Uh, it goes about the recruits. Anyway, just looking at this trailer, the world looks so beautiful. Some of the most scenic shots you've ever seen from vast rolling plains, massive mountains, these really cool castles on cliffs. It looks incredible absolutely incredible and it looks grander in a way that i don't think you could ever achieve with tsushima just because we're now on a much bigger island a much bigger place that can really show the vastness and the grandness of the japanese countryside and that's something you know really key to put in here too it's mostly countryside that we see here so i don't think we're going to see any really built up towns or villages probably more than we would have seen in Tsushima, but I don't think we're going for an Assassin's Creed urban environment type of game here. Definitely doesn't seem like that's the, the it definitely doesn't seem like that's the direction they've gone in here, but it looks really cool regardless. Right off the bat in the trailer, they do try to have this whole Kurosawa vibe going on. You've got black and white for the first three or four shots that slowly transition into color, as well as the classic stables of samurai standing off of each other and these really cool cinematic shots that we see throughout the trailer it's very cool it looks better than a movie not even like a movie better than a movie and within those vast fields we get to see there's a bit of a new thing we see where we're riding alongside other horses which could possibly indicate to being able to ride more than just our base horse which could be a cool mechanic to see put in place though i'm not gonna put much stock in that right now for now it just looks really cool though there isn't all that much i can say about the world at this point we've seen countryside we've seen castles on cliffs we've seen these large mountains that hopefully we can fully traverse that would really utilize the ps5 and the ps5 pro that they've recently announced but moving right on from that we're going to go into like the story and the setting and what that can tell us about what to expect from ghost of yotai i hope i'm saying that right by the way if i'm not saying ghost of yotai right um then uh i don't know sorry i guess as i was saying before it takes place 300 years after the first game so no jin sakai no returning characters from the base game that we know of i've got a little bit of a theory on that but we'll get there we're set in yotai which uh compared to tsushima being a southern island off the coast of japan well off the coast of japan yotai is a region in hokkaido which is well up in the northern part of japan so we're going from a really southern area to a really really northern area here it's still separated from the mainland and is classed as an island but i feel like we're a lot closer to the mainland here so we could possibly see us venturing inward to mainland japan which would be really cool to see if not for the entire world, for specific set pieces. Within the trailer, we see one of our main character's victims begin to expose it before his death, basically. Within the trailer, he speaks about Yotai being a place where people go to hide. People are, are running away from their problems here up far north. But the main character is a hunter, though, and he goes on to explain that despite her being a hunter, she now has all of the ronin in the region after her. And so he questions if she's really the, the hunter anymore. Which I think tells us a lot more about the game than we would first expect. And the original ghost, what we were doing was we were trying to save Tsushima from uh, Koten Khan. And that was the, like the main pull. Where this seems to be a much more personal story, I think, 
from here, what we're going to see is a, you know, the family was murdered, we're going out for revenge type of motivation here, or maybe something more akin to the Blue-Eyed Samurai, where, you know, she's hunting down the targets for this false sense of revenge, which I think is going to be really, really cool to see. Lending credence to that fact, we also see her with this white sash with different kanji written on it, and I'm not that good at research, I haven't looked up what these kanji could potentially mean, but I would hazard a guess that these are target names. And as we see her in the trailer, she, you know, pulls up her arm with the sash on it and she wipes her sword with blood, crossing out a name of the kanji, which could be that this white sash is her hit list, essentially, very similar to a certain character in a certain series who does something sort of similar. See this? I can read my own name, Nick! And, but that's all we really get. We see some other cool shots of her facing down with other characters, whether that be this really cool shot of her uh, against these six. It looks to be her hit list, to be honest. You've got the card on the left hand side with the really pointy hat that looks cool. The person on the far right who looks like a big brawler type of guy. The ones in the, in the between them and the center guy don't really look that interesting. But then we have the main guy who's got these big antler type things coming out of his helmet. So possibly he's a a Sakai descendant with the because the, the fully upgraded Sakai armor also had these really big antler protrusions coming out of the helmet. So we could see something similar here. I also think that we could be playing out the life of a descendant of Jin. So what I think may have happened is that eventually Jin got run out of Tsushima and had to go to the mainland or chose to go to the mainland for whatever reason. He brought Yuna with him, together they had some kids, those kids grew up and had more kids. 300 years later, we have this character here. Having the family be murdered, she goes off on her quest for vengeance. But she recalls stories of her childhood and the story she was told about the great heroes of her familial line. The main one being Jen. And so through that, we see her recall these stories at certain points within the game. And that triggers flashback sequences to playing as Jin post Ghost of Tsushima. Which would be a really cool way to tie both in and have this really cool familial line carry out. Though that could also be completely bullshit and we don't see any mention of Jen throughout the whole game, which I feel like would be a bit of a disservice as many people thought that the next Ghost game was going to be a Jin sequel. Though we've never really had a definitive answer on that, I think it would be cool to see Jin again. But I'm really, I'm also really interested to see a whole new character within this universe. And we could have this entire series be anthological, very similar to another series as well. But anyway, that's all I really have on that side of things. But then we have the mechanics. And this is where we get a lot more meat than you would expect, especially for like a first reveal trailer. For one, I think we may have a social element in this game that we did not have present in Ghost of Tsushima. For all its beauty and grandeur, didn't have a lot of places that had many people. You had a few hub areas and safe zones that had vendors and some people running about, but not a lot of, you know, just general people running about doing their thing. I think now in Yotai, we can see a lot more of that, where we see the main character walking into an inn or a bar with a lot of other people around. Now, this could just be the, a cutscene going into a set piece where she has to beat up everybody in the bar or kill everybody in the bar very Kurokawa-esque itself, but it also could be a way to gather information, gain side quests, learn different things about the region, and also to progress the investigation of the hunt that she's on to find these people that she's after. But speaking of that hunt, if you're gonna hunt, you need to be well equipped, and from this trailer we see her use a menagerie of different weapons. Within the base game, Jin used two different weapons. Three, if you count the Tanto for the stealth kills. You had your main katana, and she had the bow. Here, we see her using her main katana, we can see her using her wakizashi blade, which is a shorter version of the katana that is used in tandem with the main blade to, to have a dual wielding stance. And we do see this in action for a very, very short split second within the game. We also get this chain weapon, which I can never remember the name of, but it's also in the other franchise as well. Funny enough. And of course, we get to see her now 300 years after the first game, getting to give the old America treatment with a gun. It also hints at things like 1v1s returning as we can see different standoffs and the 
classic, you know, unsheathing of the blades occurring within the trailer as well. Nice to see that return, obviously. We also see other cool things uh, like her trekking through a, a lot of different environments from open fields and around the mountains, as well as a snowy area, which could either hint at a dynamic weather system where we're going through the different seasons, or it could just simply be going to the top of Mount Yotai, but I would much rather hazard a guess that this is going to be a dynamic weather system, considering the environment shown doesn't look to be a steep mountain incline, but a bit of a sort of semi-wooded area that's not being traversed through at the most steep elevation. There's significant focus put on this wolf, and I think the wolf does signify that this game is going to have this whole symbology of having the lone wolf uh, mimicking the main character being a lone wolf within this world, but it could also maybe be a hint at a companion system. Perhaps we have uh, a buddy similar to Metal Gear Solid and many other games where our wolf can come with us and we can get it to target other enemies, we can get it to cause distractions or sneak around with us. There's a lot of potential there, though from the hostility the wolf also shows in the trailer, this might just be sheer uh, mimicry of the main character herself. And finally we get to see her have a, a different type of musical instrument than Jin did. Within Tsushima, he had a flute that he would be able to use at nearly any time. And there was also specific mini games allowing you to play the flute in order to have animals come closer to you within the Iki Island DLC. Here though, we seem to have this guitar looking thing. I'll have the uh, the name of the instrument actually up here, but it, this is like a classic old old school Japanese musical instrument where they you know pluck the string to play different music. And it looks really cool. I think we could have some really cool mechanics with this. Not just as a way to, you know, vibe out within the open world playing our little guitar tunes, but also uh, as a way for us, specifically us, the player, being able to control what we are plucking. In effectiveness, making it very similar to The Last of Us Part 2, where you could actually play full songs using the little guitar mini game that they have. Uh, this is a proprietary Sony game. I think that mechanics jumping across from The Last of Us' uh, Naughty Dog team over here to Sucker Punch would make a little bit more sense than you'd expect. But this also could be a trigger for, as the aforementioned flashbacks that I've mentioned could be in the game previously. Perhaps singing these songs helps her recall these different events that, and these different stories that she's been told, and that's how we then relive these flashbacks of Jin post Ghost of Tsushima. But again, that's pure speculation. Overall, I think this trailer looks absolutely class like there's just so much cinematic flair and style to everything within you know the ghost franchise as it is and this trailer is no exception everything looks absolutely beautiful it's got a real cinematic flair to it the only one thing i would say is we didn't really get to see any stealth in this trailer and that sort of makes me worry i wonder if we're gonna have um, a reduced capacity of stealth compared to Ghost of Tsushima. And it's going to remain to be seen how they implement this sort of progression that they've had very strongly in Ghost of Tsushima, where you had the samurai and the ghost playstyles that will likely return here. But in what exact capacity? The main character doesn't seem to be a samurai, but more of a ronin. So there's not the same honor code there that is so fervently held to by the samurai and by Jin in Ghost. So we could maybe see... A much greater implementation of stealth or a much reduced implementation depending on how they want to do it um I'm maybe less story significance to have having the stealth though i want that to remain a very key part because i really love that progression Jin had of slowly slowly becoming the ghost as he progressed but those are all my thoughts on the trailer i really hope that uh you enjoyed the video and let me know what your thoughts on, on the game are are you happy that we have a different main character and that we're so far removed from the events of ghost of tsushima or would you have rather seen a straight gen sequel and let me know what, what you think of my theories these mechanics and um, the game looks really cool i can't wait to see more about it it's releasing some point in 2025 so that's gonna be pretty good next year's gonna be so packed out we've already got gta 6 coming and if we have this too, I don't know how I'm gonna feel. I don't know how, what I'm gonna do with myself. But thanks again for watching. Comment that stuff if you want to. Like the video if you did enjoy it. Dislike it if you didn't. And subscribe if you want to hear more stuff like this. I will have that Assassin's Creed video up as soon as I can. 
and I'll hopefully be able to make more videos on Ghost of Yotai. Anyway, folks, take her easy. Have a good one. Peace out.